Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Open Mic. I'm Scott, your host. Tonight we are in Las Vegas, Nevada, just a couple miles off the famous strip. Uh, anyways, we're at bar 702, and tonight is a very special episode for me because the host of this particular Open Mic, good friend of mine named Smokin' Joe Forsman, and he actually is the guy that gave me my first guitar, and I'm sure Joe and I will talk about that story later, but also he's the one that taught me how to play those first chords, and uh, all you musicians out there watching, I'm sure you remember the first time you were struggling with the G chord and the C chord and the D chord and getting your fingers to go to the right place. Joe's the guy that used to sit up and teach me that kind of stuff. So it's a real special episode for me. Nobody else knows we're coming except for me and Joe. So uh, it's not a contest. They're not showing up with costumes. This is actually raw, open mic, just the way we like it. Maybe we get some amazing musicians. Maybe we'll get some first timers that are breaking through the nerves. Either way, that's what we love about open mic. Come on in. Open mic, Las Vegas style, bar 702. That's the coolest part for me is open mic players, they want to play music more than they want to do anything else in their lives. So just do it. Don't worry about what other people people think about it. Like, like just, just get up there and uh, make your songs heard. You know, like every high school kid, when I started playing guitar, I had that dream, you know, I'll make it one day, and you know, 41 years old, I'm almost 42. And I have no delusions that I'm going to be some grand rock star. Or Being a gigging musician is a dream of a lot of people. All right, Mr. Joe. Um, yeah, this, I, like I told the people in the intro that uh, this was going to be a special one for me because we've been friends for, what, 20 plus years now. Uh, yeah, it has to be. And, uh, and, and as, as I'm doing this show, it's kind of funny because uh, you are the guy that taught me my first chords. On guitar, do you, thought, remember, do you remember that? I How, thought you knew. I thought you knew a little bit. No, uh, I didn't know anything. Yeah, okay. Do you remember? Do you remember back sitting on the roof in Midland, Michigan? Yeah. And uh, and the trade we made. Yeah. Why don't you tell these people about the trade? Uh, well, well I remember the trade because I I wanted to play tennis, and uh, he wanted to play the guitar. So I traded him a guitar. Was it my Seagull guitar? Yeah, I still have it. I, have I still a, have it. And I wish I brought it here, but you yeah. know, flying out, I didn't bring it. But I had a Seagull guitar, and uh, I I had bought a new guitar, and so I traded him my Seagull, and uh, he gave me a tennis racket, and I was going to give him guitar lessons. He was going to give me tennis lessons. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, he's he's doing open mics. I. I almost made it into the Wimbledon draw this year. Yeah, he so, did. But but in Wimbledon, everybody got upset this year. You know, Federer yeah. lost second round. I, I, I had a round. chance to win so this you, year. You almost had a shot at it. I think you lost in five in the qualifier. So. Song's called Lost. I've had lovers, and I've 
When I met you, you were playing guitar in bars mm -hmm. in college, singing and playing guitar. Yep. And you're still doing it now, which that was in Michigan. Now you're doing it out here in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, did you had been doing it a few years before we even met, right? In high school and I think and I such? no, I think I started. Well, I wasn't 21 in high school, so I couldn't oh, play. Oh, in you bars. play until nine o'clock or something. <laughs> um, I, not that I know of. No, I actually my the Levi's was my first gig. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah, Levi's right. was my Midland, first. Michigan. We went to Northwood University yeah, up in Midland. That's where we met. Bar called Levi's, yep. uh, and that was my first gig. They paid me forty dollars and a meal. Nice to to uh, to go in and play, and I think I knew like thirty songs. Yeah, it was Enough terrible. To fill the time that we got when I started playing there on Tuesday nights. We wound up getting everybody. Yeah, everybody campus. came there. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It was a packed yeah. house when everybody you were playing came there. Yeah, and no matter how bad I was, it didn't matter. There and was no, uh, no you were go. good. Yeah, dude, he's being modest. You were you were awesome, and that's why. No. I mean, it was weird because I, I think the first time we met, I actually played the fan card. And I came up and I said, dude, I'm a big fan of what you do because I was in awe of, of bar musicians back then. Well, that, uh, I think I think because I I had just really started l learning and playing a lot of Jimmy Buffett right, songs. Right, probably. And you were a Jimmy Buffett I, fan. And still am, yeah. So, so yeah, and that's, we were sitting on a roof and I remember the first song you ever taught me. Do you remember what it was? No. Uh, great, great Filling Station Hold Up. That's the first song. That's the oh, first wow. song I ever learned on guitar. It was "Great Filling Station Hold Up" by Jimmy Buffett, and it was G, G, D, and A, and that's it. Almost I don't even all know the way if through. I remember that damn song. Oh, it was phenomenal because I was struggling so hard with it, but you were so, you know, we obviously we're college kids. We were drinking a lot of beer, so we hung out. We drank a lot. I, I didn't drink, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. That's a that's a whole different episode. We yeah. want to get into that. We're talking. This is called Ain't Have My Coffee Yet. This is for Will Ivy, a.k.a. Alan Nolan.
Most of that is true, Nola. Most of it. The coffee part. That's it. <laughs>
<laughs> so, no, seriously, how long have you guys been playing? Um, my parents are really like musical. Okay. And they, when they met each other, there was actually in the, in the Russian like army. And uh, they, they both met they each met other in, in the, the Russian band. army? Yeah, in the band. In the Russian army band? In the yeah. Russian <laughs> army band. Yeah, my mom. Is that a marching band? Sounds <laughs> epic. Yeah. That's, oh, thank you. That I'm bummer. No, they covered Pink Floyd, I swear. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. My dad was a bassist and my mom was a, a piano player and a singer. Okay. And uh, I guess like... You know what they say about not dating band members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you, so you guys grew up all the time. Yeah, we grew up all the time, Learning music in the house, and, and just everything was. It's almost like when when as soon as I hit puberty, you know, I knew that my calling was music. As soon as I hit puberty, I started covering Tool and just yelling on top of my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
because I know you guys obviously have the talent to go do full gigs and stuff like that on your own where you get hired to do it. Do you still do a lot of open mics? All the time. Because the show is called Open Mic. You know, so. I think we, we did a lot of shows with Joe. and I come here because he lets me do whatever I want. Is that it? <laughs> that's, he hasn't yeah, been really the, networking. The freedom. Have you had that's other open want. mics where they try to rein you guys in and stuff? Well, I played open mic nights in Pennsylvania. No, they liked me. You know what I mean? They were like, hey, this but guy's they, crazy. But did they let you do your shit? Yeah, they did let me do my shit. Okay. Know? Open mic night is open mic night. Well, it is, but yeah, I've been open mics where they tell me I can't do originals. Oh, I've been oh, open mics where they say you have to do covers. Why? Because people are eating and drinking and they want to hear stuff they know. I, I know. Say, well, if I play this enough times, they'll know my stuff. Right. But he told me, no, you can't do it. You got to do that. All right, I'm not coming back here. Nazi bars. Apparently, <laughs> I played enough of my stuff because people are singing along to the Oh, no. no like, obviously, you guys got your own fan base and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I, and I remember you wrote a song called Take Me Away. Yeah. And do you remember who that was for? Uh, Jennifer Eisenberg, I believe. Jennifer Eisenberg from Okemos, Lansing? No, East no, Lansing. Jennifer was from Troy. Was she from yeah. Troy? Was yeah. she a Northwood person? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a high school girlfriend. No, All these no. years later. No. And, 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 and I made a movie out of it. Yeah. I took the song, which was not... A song. By the way, Jennifer, if you see this, if you happen to see this somehow, uh, it's all good. <laughs> I don't know what to say now. Take me away. And I wish Joe would play it tonight, but he's put that one in the vault. He, he did like what Vanilla Ice did with Ice Ice Babe, and he won't play it anymore for some strange reason. It's like against his religion or something. But uh, tonight you played uh, I'm Not Over You. Yep. And that is a new one you just wrote. Yes. Okay, now why haven't you written more songs over the years? Because I'm a terrible songwriter. That's crap. That's bull crap. That's bull crap. How many people can say they've had a movie made of a song they wrote? <laughs> well. This guy has. Um, we, we've decided today that when, we, when I do record my first album, it's going to be like a greatest hits <laughs> album. Right, it's going to yeah. be sappy songs 1 through 10. Right, right. Sappy songs 11 through 20. Yeah, and, well. And then we're just going to name them all sappy song number one, sappy yeah. song. Because that's... A, all I can write about is broken hearts, and so that's obviously, all I know. So, Joe, obviously someone's broken your heart recently. We're not going into that. I can't okay, even let's, do it with a straight face. Let's not even go into that. I can't even that. do it. All right, let's keep this about open. Worst first line I've ever read.
All right, since I had to, I, I can't leave you on a sad note, so I have to play one more song. <laughs> so do, do you have any advice you give to newcomers to the whole open mic scene or to the yeah. whole bar scene? Well, I don't, really, I don't like to give advice because I don't like to sound like I'm preaching, but the fact is the, the people that are new that are maybe not as good, not as comfortable, not as, as confident, not as dynamic, that comes from doing it. It right. comes from getting up. And that's, I mean, when I started, I went to some. Op- I went to open mics on a regular basis, and that's how I got you know, the confidence to get up and do what I do. Right, right, right. And you know, I don't care if I'm not that good. I, I, you know, I don't. There's people out there that don't like me. That's fine. I don't. I do not care. I'm confident when I get up here because I, I'm up here to have fun. I'm up here to right. play music and have a good time. And if 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 you know, there are people out there who do like it. And that's really who I who I worry about when I'm playing. Right. New people, uh, people who who don't don't have that. The only way they get it. I, I've talked to so many people who who will tell you, they sit in their house and play for hours upon hours upon hours. Right. They will improve five percent. Okay. You know, over periods of weeks right. playing in their house. Right. You get up on one open mic night and play in front of a crowd. You improve twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, just you cannot replace the actual feeling of playing no. in front of a crowd. No. And you don't go from <clears throat> here, or you don't go from your living room playing in front of your campfire to playing at the LA Forum. No, no, it's a world of difference, and and that's where all the, the music and singing and playing is all about confidence. Yeah. It's all about confidence. It's called anymore.
No, one thing that we're talking about here with, with, with people and who likes you, who doesn't like you. Right. Unfortunately, in the businesses that we've chosen, and yeah. the things that we do, yeah. um, whenever you're dealing with creative, with yeah. the things of that nature, right. you, have to, you have to remember that you can't please everybody. Right. When I write a book, not everybody's going to like it. Right. When yep. you do a movie, not everybody's going to like it. When I do a graphic design job, right. not everybody's going to like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's you, it's just something when you put yourself out there. If you're you an actor, to. you're a poet, you're a dancer, you're you're a comedian, you're anything like that. If you're putting yourself out there, there's going to be some rejection. If you're an athlete, I mean, geez, Derek, yeah. I hear people say Derek Jeter sucks. I'm like, come on. Kind of hard to follow a lot of talented people here tonight. One of the great things here, I think, and you, you've seen this in watching the episode, yeah, um, is that <clears throat> I've been to a few, you know, I, I've got some friends that run open mic nights and I go to them, right. and most of, most of them are, you know, it's the same, same people, get up and do the same music, right. it's really only acoustic. Right. I mean, you came here and you saw a surfing yeah. duo. Oh, right, you right, right. You saw industrial Yeah, in industrial line six, thrash. and then in, yeah, industrial thrash with Dimitri and, and Alex. You saw uh, a lady and a man duo with the electric guitar. You right. Saw, um, yeah. You with, saw a with, comedian, for God's sakes. With, I don't know if you put him on there, but. Matt, uh, was it? Uh, Travis. Rock, no, Rock oh. and Steph. Rock, Steph and Rock. Steph and Rock. Steph and Rock. Yeah, they were phenomenal. I love yeah. them. They were, they were so much fun. And then, and then, yeah, Travis, so hopefully he makes a show. He's a comedian, too. Yeah. And, folks, we're doing this interview before I cut the show, and we only have 24 minutes, so you can't fit everybody. Right. But we had a, uh, another another guy that I even played tonight. There's no way you're going to see that on the show. So, um, But there, there were... Uh, they loved him, too. I'm telling you right now, I swear to God, they loved him. We had a good time, yeah. But, uh, but the... Uh, Jason played tonight, which he played some Grateful Dead. Yep. He played some yep. Beatles, and he played an original, which I, it, it may make yep. the show. Ziggy, Who knows? Ziggy played. Ziggy, Ziggy is first time in tonight. Yeah. I talked to Ziggy. Ziggy played tonight. He play, came up and played guitar. He played about seven originals. And then when you got up for the full jam, Ziggy played the bass guitar. Yeah. So he's another one of those guys that just I'm so jealous of. And we had like nine of them here tonight. They're just musicians. Yeah. That they grab an instrument, and they'll play it. And I swear, if you throw them a garbage can and a spoon, they're gonna turn it into awesome music.
Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You're man. welcome, Thank man. Thank you so much, man. Love what you guys do up here. You're welcome. Keep doing it. We will be doing it, man. Every yeah. Tuesday, man. Uh, well, I'm in every Detroit. Tuesday. I can't fly out there. It's a long commute for yeah. open mic. I'll be here every Tuesday. Bro. I'll Joe be here every Tuesday, Tuesday Joe. I'll be here every Tuesday. Yeah. Every Tuesday. Yeah. The fabulous guy, Flying Kite Brothers. Yeah. Oh, so he God. likes to call us that. Phenomenal. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Signing out. Yes. That's it. You got anything else? You want to try? Uh, no, no. If you're in Vegas, Tuesday nights, uh, I, I'm not going to plug anything else. No, plug plugs. it. Plug it. Tuesday night. Well, at, pl uh, no, I'll plug two, this open mic. I'll yeah, bar 702. Bar 702. Right. On Polaris and Spring Mountain, 9 p.m. to whenever. Um, Smoking Joe's going to be Don't come after host. one because uh, Dimitri and Alex are Come after one if you want to jam. You're not going to play, yeah. but you can rock out with some awesome fun. Holy crap, these um, guys are awesome. So if you're in Vegas, you know, come out and stop by and see me, and, and uh, I'll... If you mention his name, I'll, I'll make you buy me a beer, <laughs> <laughs> even though I don't drink. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna plug my books or my anything else. No, I'll do that for you. I'll do that for you. Or anything like that. Or Guys, this has been an awesome open mic for me. Smoking Joe's been one of my best friends for about 20 plus years now. So this was this was a real treat. I hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as I did, and uh, we'll see you next time on Open Mic. Thanks, Joe. Hey, thank you. Awesome, brother. All right.